lovely people. My name is Dr. George Sparks. I am a archaeologist for Bible Interact. Today, I'd like to share with you something I thought was pretty neat and fantastic. In light of the new movies that are coming out, especially the one called The Pope's Exorcist and people's interest, interesting, interested in exorcism, I'm sure that they're going to flock to go see this movie. Um, but uh, from the British Museum, uh, a curator has found one of the oldest tablets, 3,500 3, years old, uh, that depicts a malevolent spirit, a Babylonian ghost, uh, on a tablet, tablet that also has a cuneiform text of, of an exorcism rite. So this is the oldest known ancient Babylonian tablet of exorcism. And I thought you'd like to hear this. All right. So the Babylonian ghost tablet, that's what they're calling it. But I'd like to say it's the Babylonian ghost exorcism. Uh, the curator, curator's name is Dr. Finkel. He discovered the tablet. And it's one of the earliest known depictions of a ghost that we have on record. He states, he says, everybody in Mesopotamia, as far as I understand it, believes in ghosts. And he is the curator of the British Museum's Middle Eastern Department. So pretty prestigious there. A 3,500-year-old Babylonian tablet that has been kept in the vault of the London British Museum since the 19th century has appeared to include the earliest depiction of a ghost. So 19th century means like 18 something, like 1840, 1850, 1860. So it's been in the vaults of the British Museum for over a hundred years. Isn't that fantastic? Now, if you notice right here, I because of the uniqueness of this, this discussion, I put on my mummy bead necklace. So the mummy bead bling is what I got on. I thought it, it looked official or maybe even sexy. Well, I put it on because I thought it made me look sexy, actually. But going back to the, the mummy uh, cuneiform tablet, according to Finkel, Dr. Finkel, a long overlooked clay tablet features an obscure drawing that can only be seen from an above from above under a light source. I've seen tablets like this before where they're so faint that the only way you could really get a good picture of it or, or read it is by shining light on it at, and certain types of light at different angles before you take a picture and where it can be uh, you know, effectively read or translated. You'd probably never give it a second thought, he says, because the area where the drawings are looks like there's no writing there. But when you examine it under a certain light and hold it at an angle, the features leap out at you across time in a most startling way. I got to read that again. The features must leap out at you in a most startling way. Yeah, that was better. The drawing on the tablet depicts a bearded man, a bearded man ghost, being led to the underworld by a younger woman. That's not so unusual. Possibly a lover. <laughs> it belongs to a cuneiform. That's an ancient form of Mesopotamian writing system. A Mesopotamian guide to exercising. And I'm not talking about exercising like Richard Simmons. I'm talking about exercising like the Pope's exorcist exercising, except 3,500 years ago. The text, the cuneiform text, is a guide to exercising which has never been publicly displayed. And get this, but half the tablet is missing. Now, imagine seeing an exorcist movie where a page is missing uh, of, of, the, uh, of the chant, you know, like the power of Christ. And then well, where's the rest of it? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, the page is missing. <laughs> so half of the exorcist, uh, the, uh, you can say cuneiform guide, is, is missing. So I don't know. <laughs> that probably gets you in more trouble. <laughs> it obviously is a male ghost. Well, and he is miserable, says Dr. Finkel. You can imagine a tall, thin, bearded ghost hanging about the house, how that would disturb somebody. Well, it, it would me. Uh, the final analysis is that the ghost needed, needed a lover. Repeat the line. The ghost needed a lover. That's just my imitation of Joe Biden. 
Uh, you can't help but imagine what happens before, I guess, before the exorcist, when the ghost appears like, oh my gosh, or in case of Mesopotamian, oh my Shemesh, <laughs> uh, Uncle Henry is back. And Uncle Henry has just passed away and lost three wives because the Mesopotamian understand that they can have more than one wife. So now he's all alone. So he's he's back because he's searching for one of his lovers. I guess that's what the analysis is. Something that everybody knew was the way one way to get rid of the older booger. Now remember the older booger. Well, remember Dr. Finkel from the British Museum means he's British. So older booger, it sounds like from a Harry Potter movie or something, right? So the old bloody booger, this is how we're going to get rid of him, was you have to marry him off. You got to actually marry the dead ghost off. It's not fanciful to read into this. For it's an explicit message, says Dr. Finkel. It's very high quality and written in a immaculate draftsmanship. Now, what you have to understand about curators and archaeologists, whatever they find, whatever they discover is, if it can go to press, and it seems of interest to the public, it's the most fantastic, the most incredible, uh, most sensational, and sensational has to be the key here, um, find that's ever been, right? But that's just the way we are. We like our attention just as much as anybody else. Now, the back of the text, the back of these cuneiform um, tablet uh, is, or are instructionally instructions for handling the malevolent spirit. So if it's a malevolent spirit, then I guess you, an angry poltergeist, a, a demon, you know, that's why they got to have the exorcism. It seizes hold of a person and pursues him and cannot, cannot let it loose. Maybe in this case, it, it possesses her because it's, it's an older gentleman that's lonely and he misses one of his three wives. So anyway, with this in mind, you got to stay tuned for part two because this is where we're going to actually describe and translate the exorcism itself. We got to find out how do you get rid of this pesty poltergeist, but we're going to do that in part two. Thank you very much. Remember to like and subscribe.